Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy with Kevin Frischi of Calvinator Engines in Wakapaneta, Ohio. Awesome. And we are doing machining stuff to the cylinder head. What we're doing specifically <laughs> is we are making larger holes to accept the 7 16 studs. Yes, 7 16 studs. studs that we're going to be using to hold the rocker arms in place. Uh, right now, what are they? Like, uh, well, they're way smaller. 5 16 5 16 So, Comp Cam sent you this stud here to accept the 7 16 rocker arm. This is 7 16 14 uh, thread that will engage into the head. So this will end up looking like that. You measure the depth, and it's just under 600 thousandths, so I'm going to have to drill at least 600 or 5 eighths of an inch deep to allow for the point of the drill and the point of the tap, and hope we stay out of water. There we go. So we will stand back and let Kevin do his work. But we're going to watch you. Wondering. And breathe heavily. High-tech measuring technique. Plenty of Drill room. bit and thumb. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be fancy, just functional. For lack of a better word, it's just a drill press, right? Or uh, Bridgeport mill. Okay, so it's a mill. Yeah. So you can do a lot more stuff with it. Yeah. So this is like precursor to a CNC machine in a way? Absolutely. But totally manual? Yeah. Awesome. And how old is that machine? <laughs> I don't know. It might be as old as I am. Nice. It was made in Bridgeport, Connecticut but I have no idea when it was made. To say they don't make them like they used to with this thing, I think would be an apt description, wouldn't you say? I'll set a stop. Uh, this is just the stop I set so I can drill every hole the same depth. What I did is I set this fixture in here in the head and I used the dial indicator. I indicated the pad in where we're gonna be drilling to make sure it is square to the chuck. And I indicated the head in from left to right. So as I go down the line, it'll be square. That's what this is all about. It comes down to, once again, thousands of an inch or fractions of a millimeter, depending upon where you're from. And having the machine and the equipment set up properly ahead of time makes drilling all those holes more efficient because he's drilling several. So he's setting the depth of the machine so that when he runs it down in and it machines things out, it machines them to the proper depth evenly all the way across. Because if it's uneven, that could cause problems. We don't want no problems. We want a nice cylinder head. And you're adding cutting oil? Yeah. The aluminum will stick to the bit. That ought to be enough. So I kind of cheat. I've used this. This little uh, chamfer tool has a, a bull nose on the end and that will fit into the tap and that will make sure I'm tapping the hole straight. So I'm just going to use that as a guide. So it chamfers, it chamfers the end of it? No, or? I'm not using the chamfer oh, tool oh, for okay. that. I get it. So that's going to that's gonna make sure that you run it in completely and totally straight. <laughs> exactly. You're really smart. It's, uh, well, you know, you get enough of them crooked, you learn. Oh, wow. That's... Never thought of that. So what would the difference be between a tap and a thread chaser? A thread chaser doesn't cut threads. It'll roll threads back into shape where a tap actually cuts threads. So would you say that many of us may be using a tap in place of where we should be using a thread chaser? Right. And that's that's why I don't throw my old taps away. When they're dull, they just become thread chasers. So a dull tap could be used as a thread chaser? <laughs> In my book it does. Okay. How do you know when they're worn out? And it doesn't cut very well. Um, being in here, we use, uh, you know, you may be cutting aluminum and then turn around and cut cast iron. And cast iron really dulls them pretty quick. That's why I grabbed the tap that I did because I was pretty sure I hadn't used it on cast iron. This is actually a starting tap. Starting tap, plug tap, and bottoming tap. i just go over that real quick. Your starting tap has a lot more chamfer or taper on it to start the threads. This is your typical plug tap you're going to buy at the hardware store, at your auto parts store. And then this is a bottoming tap. We have threads that go clear to the end. So your plug tap could be used as either, but still I won't get threads clear to the bottom of the hole so that's why I use the starting tap and then I'm going to come in with the plug tap and then I'll 
cut the threads clear to the bottom of the hole. Unless you're a machinist. I mean, I, I just use taps. I never really thought about there being different types of taps, but I just learned me something today. And those chips in there will screw you up. And now that you've got the hole already tapped once with the starting yeah. tap, it's going to go in straight. Yes. So you, that's not the same kind of concern that it was before. Is that why these have that little divot in the end of the tap? I, I guess. Huh. Never knew it. And you're, there, you're going bottom. backwards every once in a while to help clear out? Yeah, to clear out some chips. My tool just fell apart. It happens. <laughs> and that's just brake linear, isn't it? Yeah. And that's a push rod guide there for those of you playing at home. And why would we use push rod guides? Well, we need something to keep the rocker arm aligned up with the tip of the valve, and we got the push rod over here. So this guide plate will keep our push rod from walking around, because everything's gonna pivot off of our stud. So. And that could be particularly disastrous with roller rockers? Yes, and that's an advantage to a shaft rocker setup is the shaft is going to go through every rocker arm keeping everything aligned properly and all you have to do is shim it side to side mm -hmm. in the shaft rockers. I've seen those on like old Chryslers, things like that. Yeah, the Chryslers, the FE series Fords use shaft rockers mm -hmm. and then uh, you can get aftermarket rocker, shaft rocker sets. Holds up better under RPM too as opposed High to studs. High RPMs, lots of spring pressure, oh yeah. And, and something I thought of here was uh, so we made this hole bigger and you can see how it's close to the end and I wondered how much material I was going to have left but we're using a, a hydraulic roller cam um, well I should say with the cam setup we're using where you don't have an exorbitant amount of spring pressure you know some of the stuff we, we build you'll have uh, 300 pounds or more on the seat uh, 800 plus open spring pressure and I that could just jack that stud right out of there because we don't have enough uh, material for support so in that, that being the case, then I would go with a, uh, a shaft rocker setup. But because of that lack of material there, we still may consider later on going with a stud girdle, which will lock all the studs together for strength. You know, just, it's still plenty of material for what we're doing. We'll be okay, but just a consideration in some builds. For instance, higher spring pressures would be in engines that might be running at higher rpms that higher, type of yeah. thing yeah solid roller cam applications yeah when you're running 8000 plus rpms is really violent on the valve train and you would need a, a stronger spring in essence to at those higher rpms make sure that that valve closes yes other than that you would get valve float right and valve float is when the valve is literally just hanging open it's this, out this, of control yet the spring is is not able to do anything I'm looking for any drill bit deflection. It has a factory chamfer, so that'd be I, good I noticed you didn't put another chamfer on the top of that. Is it necessary or having I more material? I set this stop. Okay. I can actually come back with a drill in this and just go right down the line. Does it need to happen tops. or does it just like make it I like to have a chamfer. Okay. It keeps the threads from pulling out um, and that um, relieves the burr off the top. Okay. It's over that quick. See, if we had a CNC machine, that'd be, that'd be really be slick. We'd have a program just written and, in, push the and these different tools in the different chucks. and Go grab a cup of coffee, exactly. come back, change the tool. Hit cycle start and get a coffee. <laughs> I kind of like that there's old school machinery working on the engine. <laughs> well, there is a, a still a place for it. Because I can't, I don't know how long it'd take me to write a program to do that, you know? And we do so many varied engines. I don't do a lot of one thing. If I was pumping 
20 sets of forward heads at once, you know, and sure, right. it'd be great. I got the chance uh, a couple of years ago to Hendrix Motorsports and see what they had going on for all the, I mean, the three race teams. Yeah. They had machines, they had a room full of machines making pistons and every other parts of the engine all the time. Absolutely. They were just all the time making stuff. So I, I suppose in that application that would be ideal to have programs that would run because all the engines are the same. Yeah. Just be pumping them out one after another. And is that the finishing one that you just went? Yeah, that used? was the bottoming tap. So it cut threads clear to the bottom of the hole. So the rocker, threads in the rocker arm stud won't bottom out and gold. And Kevin Frischie, thank you for the lesson. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Links in the description to Calvinator Engine so you can check out more about them. If you have automotive questions, I'm going to put a link to ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have those automotive questions. Uh, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you wish to connect with me socially, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thanks again. Thanks. See you next time.